Let's do a character design review for Gita, our newest Pokemon champion. We'll start by comparing this official character art to pre-existing people in the Pokemon world, then analyze pose, costuming slash clothing, details and shape language, and then we'll close with a breakdown of what can be inferred from all these design decisions. Upon the release of Scarlet and Violet, Gita received critique specific to how battling her was comparatively easy. While power level slash difficulty is absolutely intrinsic to designing a video game character, this video is not concerning game mechanics. We're talking about official artwork. Where a character designer would build a concept to reach this finalized design, we're essentially doing the opposite. We'll use each section of the video to pull apart every little detail to build a retroactive video concept sheet. And along the way, we'll even offer an answer as to why her team was built the way it was. Let's get started with part one, comparisons to pre-existing characters. When she was first revealed, Gita had some parallels to Lusamine. Both women are the leading experts in their given professions with awesome hair. So there is some speculation Gita too might go down the same twist villain route, and thankfully she didn't. She also had some parallels to Leon, with Hop, the Galarian rival, and his big brother, the regional champion, Gita and Nimona's design had the potential to repeat the same sibling connection. And again, thankfully, this was not the case. When you really look at these two, they aren't all that similar, especially in terms of Pokemon's human design mechanics. It would be very unusual for siblings to have two different non-naturally occurring hair colors, with some situational exceptions. Hair colors are a go-to way the series establishes family lineage. Furthermore, the different eye colors, Nimona's freckles and her jagged hairline seem to intentionally make distinctions between the two. Moving on from other character comparisons, let's look at the pose. Gita is standing directly facing the viewer. This direct eye contact suggests total confidence. Her left hand is hovering at her hip, as if she's trained to whip out a Pokeball like a sharpshooter. Her other hand has risen to adjust her necktie, but she uses only a single pinky. This suggests she is exacting and precise, wasting no unnecessary energy. While adjusting the tie, she maintains the direct eye contact, illustrating that she can multitask without distraction. Her almost comically proportioned feet are angled slightly outward likely in part to highlight this fun feature, but also in a way that echoes Quaquavel's fancy footwork. Like, she might have a backstory of being embarrassed by her big feet as a kid, but learn from Quaquavel's how to use them to her athletic advantage. And finally, the facial expression. Her mouth is open in a slight smile. Her eyes, though looking directly ahead, have a certain glaze, as if she's looking through you, the viewer, at her own adventure before her. Like she's listening to what you said, but also scanning the horizon behind you. Now let's look at Gita's outfit. As a consummate professional, Gita is rocking a matching black suit. Her pants have a seam pressed to perfection. Her padded shoulders almost shake the viewer and shout, This is a businesswoman! The double-breasted jacket possibly pulls from naval topcoats, which would carry Paldia's maritime motifs. Under the jacket, we can see some sort of form-fitting cerulean shirt. It has an almost luxury activewear quality. That shirt has a turtleneck that's capped with a black band, that meets and slopes downward and connects at two golden triangles. The black band rides a nice line between either being the elastic neck of an athletic shirt or a feminization of that concept by using it to act as a choker necklace. That feminine to masculine blurring is continued with the necktie. Shape-wise, it mimics a bolo tie, but material-wise, it suggests ribbons. These will likely animate in very dynamic ways, 
flying behind her as she faces an explosion without flinching. The bolo tie, black suit, gold symbol, more on that later, and big shoes all evoke the authority of a sheriff. She's the head honcho. To match her cerulean shirt, she's wearing matching gloves. These are very likely riding gloves, specifically. Moving on from the outfit, let's get into the fun part. Details and shape language. Like how Lusamine allegedly based how she styled her hair off of Feramosa, we can infer that the way Gita styles her own hair was inspired by her partner Pokemon, Glamora. The volume is almost windblown, suggesting that this character will be doing a lot of traversing in the great outdoors. Now let's circle back to the symbol on her glove. It's a compass, but notably not pointing north. This could be a connection to the game's theme of forging your own pathway to treasure. It appears to be a symbol of the Paldean Pokemon League, as members of the Elite Four feature it too. One more thing about this compass. It's nice that both these triangles are filled in as opposed to one being an outline only. With one as an outline, that would indicate a definitive north, but with both filled in, either direction could be north. This design choice suggests the sentiment of fundamentally having to know your own calling without relying on the assistance of a compass. Or also that once you complete one adventure, you can always turn back around and have another one. Gita's hair is lit from below, as if a faint but large light is reflecting off a surface. This surface could be inferred to be the polished floor tilings of her headquarters, or the moonlight bouncing off a glassy lake. Her eyes have a yellow light in them, like she's watching the sunrise or set, as if she's situated at an intersection of time. That daffodil yellow streaks in her hair could be dyed or natural highlights, or they could be the starlight streaking past her as she rides her steed across an open plain. That's what this analysis really comes down to. Everything about Gita's design screams a passion for the Pokemon world equivalent of horseback riding. To feel the wind rush by her as her go-goat giddies up. Her Espathra and Avalug might be helpful modes of transportation too. This might be the explanation for how her team is built. They're all Pokemon that she could theoretically ride across specific biomes or a Pokemon that she sacrificed the option to ride on for its precision she also values. It's unlikely, but it would be very cool if she gave a shout out to Colossian Rhyhorn Racing. Perhaps she knows Grace, Calum slash Serena's mom? We mentioned how Gita's outfit had a few allusions to a sheriff. So let's take that information and make a bold prediction. If we ever get a Legends Unova game of some kind, there's a really good chance a Gita ancestor would be the quote-unquote lawman. Some kind of lone ranger mixed with Commander Kamado. We'll check back on that. And finally, one last really, really cool aspect to Gita's design. Her black suit and cerulean details might seem like she was again inspired by her Glamora, but it might be a bit more clever than that. As the Primera, as the best of the best of the best, this color scheme is very likely inspired by a shiny King Gambit. The mechanic of evolving a Bisharp into a King Gambit by defeating three leader Bisharp, totally parallels how Gita can only be fought by beating several mini bosses before her. The idea is further supported if her golden ribbons are interpreted as the extended blades of King Gambit's torso. Even King Gambit would be impressed by Gita's hair. Yeah. Gita is definitely making a cheeky little nod to being the best of the best of the best. This concludes our analysis of Gita's character design. It will be exciting to see how much these interpretations hold up when she makes her debut in the anime series, or if she pulls a Cynthia and shows up in other games. If you hit like on this video, that will be your vote telling us to do more character design analysis like this one. Subscribe to the Ognot YouTube channel so you don't miss the next.